<laughs> I think the question, right, first, why this film? Why, why Portland Inc.? Why a film about Portland? <laughs> you want me um, to go first? <laughs> yeah, if, if you want to. Um. <clears throat> um, yeah, well, uh, I, I think first off, I just I want to um, recognize uh, uh, Bing Sheldon. Um, and if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be sitting up here talking yeah. about this. Yeah. Um, he was really the, the catalyst that uh, got the... The ball rolling for this whole thing. Yeah. Um, what's, what was kind of fun is when we started... Um, uh, we started kind of peddling this to people. Um, it was really interesting because we, um, we would kind of just uh, Twitter ourselves into parties and stuff and just sort of, uh, you know, walk in and, and be like, we're making a film about Portland. And, um, and people were just sort of like, why? <laughs> and now uh, that it's been, you know, the course of eight or so months, um, we're, we're like, we're making a film about Portland and people are just like, why? <laughs> you know, so we still get the same uh, response, but um, the inspiration behind it is that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's incredibly timely. Um, everybody's talking about all these issues. And um, I think to us, it was more along the lines of like, um, film is a, uh, is a beautiful way of, um, of putting ideas out into the world and telling stories. And if we could tell as many of those stories as possible under the same lens, as many diverse stories, um, and put them all under the same lens, then we could hope to call that Portland um, and bring that uh, front and center. And um, uh, the other side of that is that um, many of us know, and, and maybe if you don't, you at least have the feeling that Portland is being watched. I mean, we have articles written about us a lot from the New York Times um, and from all over the place. And so um, with a place that's being watched like that, you sort of um, start to feel this responsibility towards like, okay, so how are we going to do this? Everybody's kind of looking to us to, to make that happen. So, I asked the audience if Portland was getting better or worse. What are your thoughts? What'd you guys say? <laughs> 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 half and split, half. Yeah, yeah, half and half. Um, yeah. We we are in in, in uh, flux right now. Um, you know, we we compare it to uh, kind of where uh, we were in in the '60s and '70s. You know, we're we're going through uh, a lot of the same changes. I mean, things are vastly different now because of the work uh, that they did back then, and and they did just a fantastic job. Um, but uh, yeah, you know. It's it's a very concerning time. There are there are a lot of issues that are cropping up, and mm -hmm. and you know if if we do not do it right, uh, you know we're gonna see some really rough times ahead for Portland. I mean we're we're already seeing them, mm -hmm. you know. But that being yeah, how said, many people walked by the folks on the sidewalk? Right, that's their life right now. Yeah, and like, um, that's, you know that's, that's a very life, real you know, right. Yeah, um, a lot of people also um, they they um, you know sort of. A topic of conversation is like, oh well, when did the the old Portland become new Portland? And I think everybody has their own definition of that. You know, for me, um, old Portland became new Portland the, the day that Kirk Reeves decided to take his own life. And if you don't know who Kirk Reeves is, you might remember him as that uh, fantastic guy that wore the Mickey Mouse ears um, at the, the at the foot, foot of the, of the, the Hawthorne, Hawthorne Bridge. Bridge and played trumpet to all the drivers on their commute and was just constantly performing. Um, you know, and that was a, a big catalyst for, for me personally to start exploring this topic. Yeah. So. Pippin, you mentioned uh, city planners in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Uh, that was definitely a, a, a moment in, in a, or the, a large shift for Portland. Right. What was their vision? What were they, what were they trying to do? Why that, why that time? Well, it's interesting because at the time in the, the late 60s, the, the average age uh, for you know, uh, the, the commissioners and the, and the mayor were you know, uh, late 60s uh, to 70s. And uh, you know, a group of, of young guys, 28-year-olds, you know, came in and um, you know, downtown was dying and uh, you know, the businesses were really concerned with what was going on and, you know, all of the, the strife and conflict with, with Vietnam and, um, you know, just we were, we were ripe for change and, you know, we, we are a very uh, progressive, uh, you know, base of citizens and activists. 
uh, we definitely need to become way more diverse, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think that, um, I think that's the, the way we are wanting to grow now, you know. And right, but there, there's a difference between what, what you, you know, the way that you want to grow and then just actively doing that, right. you know. I mean, we have to officially stop saying, well, this is what we want to do and, and really just start actively doing it. And I think what you've seen here a lot of today is, you know, a lot of that message as well. Um, but what's interesting about, um, about the past, those guys, and I just sort of had this... Um, even before I start, we started interviewing them, I had this like um, thing in my head that it was sort of like this breakfast club type of group of people that just, they came in and they just really were able to um, acquire leadership and, and um, you know, put, put an end to the uh, Mount Hood freeway plans that was gonna just completely uh, destroy um, Division and Powell. Um, that whole neighborhood would have been wiped out. Uh, and the riverfront um, on the west side. Yeah, and just- Nato and, Parkway would and have these been people, a highway. Yeah, these people that just had um, this ability to to do it, and and we're not talking planners or mm -hmm. or uh, builders or or anyone that's an expert in their field. We're talking just regular people, um, and and we need to we need to get back to that. Uh, so many of the people that we've interviewed, though, you know, when we start to get into the nitty gritty, you know, well, what do you think needs to happen? Um, a lot of them, you know. Uh, their precursor is like, oh, well, well, wait a minute. So I'm not a planner, but, and it's like, so let's just forget about that. We are all like a really amazing group of people that care. Um, and, and, and your degree actually doesn't apply here. And what's, what we've found is actually the ideas that come from people who aren't, you know, who don't consider themselves to be planners have actually the most fantastic stuff to say about what to do, so. And have had the most impact, you know, mm -hmm. Alison Belcher. Yeah. You know, what, yeah. what did Ira Kellis, Keller yeah. say to her? <laughs> yeah, we interviewed um, Alison Belcher who started Riverfront for People in she's, the 60s. She's 84 now, by yeah. the way. And she, um, she, she is the woman who, who, uh, who, who took her children and crossed the, uh, the highway that, that is now NATO Parkway, but it, it used to be a highway, and she would picnic on the other side as the cars are ripping by. And she kept on saying, well, we need access to the river. You know, and that, that's now Tom McCall uh, Waterfront Park. And like, what an amazing asset. Where would we all party? Where would we have our beer fests, you know? <laughs> and so if it wasn't for her, um, you know, and, she's, and, and Ira Keller, you know, she called him up and said, I saw the I, story yeah, on the news. Yeah, I saw news. the story, and, and you're going to widen that highway, and no, 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 we need to actually just close that highway down and have access to it. And he said, oh, you're just a housewife, you know? Yeah. And she, oh, she got all fired up. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so, but I mean, it's, just, it's just one person, right? Um, and back then, just a housewife. Yeah. So, yeah. incredible. <laughs> we see a lot of people moving to Portland, mm -hmm. primarily because of livability. Right. Yeah. Right. It's the big. Is the big. Yeah. The big buzzword. Talk to me about livability uh, in terms of a lifestyle versus livability as a as a brand as a buzzword. Sure. Yeah. yeah um, I think one of the most fascinating things that we've come upon is this sort of um, definition of livability. Um, when we've been talking with people, we've been asking them, okay, so well, what makes a livable city? What do you think um, is, a, is a, you know, what makes a livable place? And, you know, some people are like, oh, you know, I really love that I can walk downstairs from my condo and get my latte and they make it just how I like it. And, you know, and my barista knows my name. And other people are like, I love that I can ride my bike along the Esplanade. Um, and other people are like, you know, I'd love to not sleep under that tarp. Um, and I think what's really important is that we need to stop defining livability from what, you know, what we think makes a livable, a livable place and start thinking more community-centric. What, what makes this uh, a livable place for, for all of us? And that's actually possible. Um, and... Right? I heard somebody, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but... but but what's the, the difference between back then, you know, when they're creating this sort of, um, you know, they, ha they had this blank slate, uh, 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 you know, quite a bit to, to work with when downtown was dead back then and all that. Um, and so they, they had this basic idea of what, you know, what they thought livability was. Um, 
And, and what we see now is, is that lifestyle transformed into a brand, and this brand has now become a very hot commodity. Um, and um, what happens when a, a brand becomes a hot commodity is it like loses its soul, doesn't it? It um, gets, bought gets, up. gets bought up, it gets consumed, um, thrown out, used up, however you want to um, right, say you can, it. You can literally buy Portland rainwater. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rainwater, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 and um, and it's just uh, it's you know this is not Portland, is it? Um, that's that's not the way. That's not the way. Uh, th that's not the Portland way. You know, it's uh, we are a, a group of of people that. Um, whether you're born here or whether you came here yesterday. I think there was one guy, right? Point him out to me. He's over there. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, the, the, the thing is, is that um, we, we have to stop uh, with this whole, like, don't move to Portland thing. Um, and... Because for one, that's just impossible. It's impossible, like, you can't yeah. can't stop people from moving anywhere and instead it's like well what what can we do to to welcome people how, how can we share um what this place is like you know if you come from a place of like if you come from a place of like um you know you come from la or new york or whatever maybe you're used to that level of survival there you know and if you move here um Likely, you know, you're like most people. You moved here because you're drawn to maybe slow your life down a little bit. Um, maybe try something new. Maybe open a typewriter shop and, like, have it become a thing. And you know what I mean? And, um... I, yeah. <laughs> donuts, and, you know? Right, yeah. How many donut shops do we have? We need more of those. Uh, <laughs> um, but it's, a. Uh, you, you know, the, the thing is, that's interesting is that also has its historical reference, right? Um, who's the guy that was like, uh, come visit Portland, but don't, you know, or come visit Oregon, but don't come here to live, right? That goes way, way back. And a lot of the interviews that we've done, it's, um, you know, people are like, I'm going to, you know, we should put up a wall, do this and, and that. And it's, <laughs> it's like, you know, I don't know if you guys remember, but, you know, who was the last, uh, the most recent guy that suggested we put up a wall, David, Pippin? You know, you know this, right? <laughs> Trump. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's, um, I'm pretty sure that name doesn't, uh, you know, sit too well with it's a lot wall. of people. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> right. Feel free to like drop that name, like bleep it. Moving out. on. <laughs> yeah. Are we, uh, are we headed more towards uh, San Francisco or Seattle? Uh, we are heading, um, we are we, headed we, towards we, Portland. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. We're going towards ourselves. We're, uh, we, I mean, we're, 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 we're pioneers, you know. We just are by nature. I think it started with the, uh, the trail here, and um, it probably goes back further than that, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, you know, Portland is a, is a case study city. You know, if you go to any institution and talk about Portland, like, you know, the reason why all eyes are on us is because, you know, we, we are looked upon as finding the, the answer to, you know, to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. a, a very, you know, big piece to yeah. this film. Yeah, and our, fir our first, um, the first guy that we interviewed um, was Gil Kelly, uh, who is the director of planning for San Francisco. And he was the director of planning for Portland for about 10 years prior. And his thing was, um, you know, I mean, th our interview was, was very much like, let's compare Portland to, to San Francisco the whole way. And he was highly concerned. Um, and he was like, you know, there, there, is a, there exists a, a blueprint for this kind of change. We're not looking at a, a dot-com bubble that's going to burst. You know, this is a very different economy. Um, and if we zoom out of the Portland lens, we can see, actually, that this is happening all over the nation and our globe. And as we move towards this um, future look about um, how we are growing and, and, you know, the urbanization, you know, people are moving to cities more and more. Um, by 2050, there will be, you know, 70% of the world will live in a city. You know, we have to figure out this equity problem. Um, it's just all there is to it long before 2050. How can people who are interested in the film follow along? 
Uh, so, you know, we have, uh, uh, you know, Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go on Instagram and, and look up the hashtag Portland Inc., uh, you'll probably find just all of our posts. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a website, portlandinkthemovie.com. We're uh, constantly updating that. Um, yeah, we're we're definitely out there, and we've got a YouTube channel. <laughs> and we love to with talk to you guys; and it's super fun. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's, yeah. So we're we've we're very some active, and, and uh, yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, thank you for for, right. for showing some of your movie thank today. You. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.